In this video, we're going to focus on the extreme value theorem. And it says that if f is continuous on a closed interval a to b, then the function f has both a minimum and a maximum on the interval. So let's illustrate it. So let's say if we have some graph and we have a curve on a graph. And both of these are endpoints because it has to be a closed interval. So the first point is A, the second point is B. According to the extreme value theorem, there's going to be a minimum and a maximum on this interval. And there is. So this point represents the absolute maximum because it's the highest point on the closed interval A to B. And this point here represents the absolute minimum because it is the lowest point on the interval a to b for the function f. Now let's go over some more examples where you need to identify the extrema on a graph. Here's another one. So let's say if we have a graph that looks like this. Identify all of the extrema on this graph. So let's call this A, B, and this point C and D. So at B, we have the absolute, actually that is not the absolute maximum. The absolute maximum is here. That's the highest point on the graph. It's not the endpoint B anymore, but it still exists in the interval A to B, since we have a closed interval. And A is the lowest point of the graph, so that's the absolute minimum. But in this example, we have two other things that we need to pay attention to. Notice that at point D, this is known as a local minimum, also known as a relative minimum. And at C, we have another relative extrema, so that's a local max or a relative max. Now, Notice that we can draw a horizontal tangent line at C and at D. And there's something called Fermat's theorem. If F has a local maximum or a local minimum at some point C, or it could be another letter, and if F prime of C exists, then F prime of C is zero. So here's C and here's D. So at point C, we have a relative maximum, and according to Fermat's theorem, f prime of c is going to equal 0 because we do have a point that exists in the function. So anytime you have a horizontal tangent line, the derivative will be 0 at that point. So f prime of d is also 0. And anytime you have the first derivative function being equal to 0, then those points are known as critical numbers. So c and d are critical numbers of the function. So anytime f prime of c is equal to 0, or even if it doesn't exist, you have a critical number at that point. Now let's look at some more examples. Go ahead and identify the extrema for this one. Let's say this is point A. Let's call this B and C. And also let's focus on this one. So let's call this point A, B, C, and D. Feel free to pause the video. Identify all of the extreme values in this function. So notice that at point C, we have an absolute maximum. It's the highest point, but we don't have an absolute minimum. And it makes sense why we don't have both, because we do not have a closed interval. In fact, we have an open interval from A to B, since we have open circles at both point A and B. So notice that A appears to be the lowest point in the graph, but it's not actually a point. So therefore, this is not an absolute minimum. 
If it was a closed circle, then it would be an absolute minimum. Now, on the graph on the right, B represents an absolute minimum because we do have a close point at B. But we don't have a closed interval because there is a break between C and D. So the extreme value theorem would not apply in this example. Notice that there is no absolute maximum. And this point appears to be the highest point, even though it's a hole, but it's not an absolute max. If it was a closed circle, then it would be an absolute max. So watch out for the open circles whenever you have a graph.